It was one of the biggest stories of the 80s, the Seattle cyanide deaths, and one woman was responsible. She had the perfect plan. If Stella Nichol poisoned her husband Bruce with cyanide-laced capsules, his death would look accidental, and the insurance would pay off more money. But the plan backfired. So Stella did some quick thinking. She needed more cyanide, more bottles of Excedrin, and at least one more victim. A week later, Sue Snow, a mother of two, died of cyanide poisoning. Now two people were dead. It wasn't until Stella's daughter, Cynthia, turned her mother in that Stella, the Seattle cyanide killer, got thrown in jail. The story isn't over yet. Some family members say Stella was railroaded. Poor Stella, she's innocent. Some say her daughter Cynthia is really the mastermind behind the deaths. Please meet Wilma. She likes to be called Willie. Willie says she was more than just Stella's niece. She was Stella's best friend. So it was only natural that Willie would be very shocked when she found out that Stella was being investigated for Bruce's death. Willie always felt Stella was innocent. Later, after a chain of events, the murder mystery took a dramatic twist. Willie now says she no longer believes that her aunt is innocent. But Stella's sister Bertha, who we will talk to in a few minutes, says Stella is definitely innocent. Joining us to help us along with this story is Greg Olson. Greg is someone who has been following the cyanide murder mystery since it began. For a lot of us in this part of the country, this is an update. We knew that there was cyanide in capsules in the drugstore, but we didn't know whatever happened. Well, he's got answers. He detailed this information in a new book called Bitter Almonds. And by the way, he has uncovered some shocking evidence to this story. First, Willie, we're going to start with you. Take us to the beginning of the story. Well, in about May of 1986, I was living in Houston, <clears throat> and my Aunt Stella called me and wanted to know if she could come live with me. And um, Houston's a big city, and I, I would love to have had her come live with me and told her, yes, she could come, she needed to come right now, uh, or she needed to wait till I got back from vacation. And she simply said if I saw her headlights, she'd be there, and if not, she wouldn't be there. So I went to vacation, and when I came back, uh, I got back on a late Sunday night, and in wee hours of the morning, on Monday morning, I got a telephone call from my Aunt Stella saying that, that my Uncle Bruce had died, and um, that he had died of uh, emphysema. And Everyone in the family know he had emphysema? No, I had no idea. Oh. He never had been ill. Um, he, was, he did a lot of things. He rode my motorcycles. I was surprised. But I was more shocked over the fact that he had died than giving any thought to what had happened there. So, um... Part of that phone call that Willie first received from her aunt, um, part of the conversation uh, indicated that Stella was unhappy in her marriage to Bruce. But Willie didn't... Really, Willie just blew it off. She thought that her aunt was just blowing off some steam. She didn't really think that it was a deeply troubled marriage but that they were having just a little bit of a fight. Mm -hmm. So when Willie goes on vacation, she comes back and she's horrified to learn just two weeks later that, uh, you know, Stella's husband is dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got on a plane and I came back to Washington. Um, the funeral was in a little town called Winthrop. This is state of Washington? This state of Washington, yes. Um, and I came back to, came up to Winthrop to go to the funeral. And Cynthia Lee was there, that is my Aunt Stella's daughter. And um, Aunt Stella, of course, was there, and, and I was there, and I was late getting there. I got there just in time to hear the guy say, you know, the funeral was over. Hmm. And I was surprised that um, Cynthia Lee was crying and grieving and just carrying on something fierce. And but she was Stella's daughter. You'd expect her to cry and grieve. Well, I no. I guess I would expect her to cry if they both were. They were mother and daughter, and I guess I would have expected some semblance of similar emotion, but not Cynthia Lee, I mean, really carrying on as though she were the widow, and my Aunt Stella being very quiet and very reserved, very pale, but um, I guess, I guess I, at the time I just assumed that's how Aunt Stella was going to handle it. 
Many people remarked about the behavior of both Stella and Cynthia, her daughter, at That's that funeral. Okay, so we'll file that fact away, right? How they behaved at the funeral. You know, some said Stella was cold and indifferent to her husband's death. Others said that Cynthia was out of control and grief, and they couldn't make sense of what, what was going on, what was going on at that funeral. Okay. When the funeral itself was over, the family, um, what family was there and myself, went to a small restaurant in Winthrop, and Cynthia Lee then reverted to her normal laughing and joking and telling, you know, off the, off the wall jokes and comments. And I got back in a plane and subsequently went back to Houston and had several conversations with my Aunt Stella through the course of the next several months. And oftentimes she was calling me late at night and she was distraught and she was depressed and she was crying and, and I'm doing everything I can to help her being 2,500 miles apart. Um, there came a point in time where she called me to tell me that they were beginning an investigation, that another person had died of cyanide poisoning and that, and that my uncle had not died of emphysema but had in fact died of cyanide poisoning and I was shocked. I'd like to go back just a little bit if I could to let people know that there were two deaths that occurred. The first death was Della's husband Bruce. A week later another person died and that it was the other person's death, Sue Snow, that led to the investigation and the uncovering that there had been a cyanide tampering in Washington State. Bruce's death had been filed away as emphysema. It was a natural cause. And for that natural cause, she would receive approximately $30,000 in insurance money. If it was an accidental death, the money skyrocketed up to about $176,000. Isn't that an unusual policy that if someone dies of natural causes, they get 30, but if it's an accident? Is it was a that? double indemnity. You double know, indemnity. Murdering by uh, product tampering is considered accidental death. Okay, I don't quite understand. Good news for everybody. <laughs> I don't understand the insurance companies, but then I never would. So if he had died of emphysema, of thirty thousand. Right. This way, a lot, lot more money. Right. Okay. What happened? Well, um, she had called me and said that she was being investigated, that she was being watched, and the FBI was talking to her, and they wanted her to do a polygraph test, and. It's like, this is my Aunt Stella you're talking about. This is not somebody down the street. This is, this is my, she's my favorite aunt. You know, we're, we're good friends. She was more of a mother to me than anything. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I kept telling her, no, don't take a polygraph because they'll just railroad you into trouble and just leave it alone and let it go. And um, that did not happen. I subsequently moved back up to Washington. Um, my Aunt Stella did have a polygraph test. She did take it. Um, this polygraph issue lingered for many, many months. Stella Nichol came up with many reasons to not take a polygraph. She said that her heart was bad. She was too distraught over the loss of her husband. She had every excuse in the book. Um, and a, a lot of them were believable. I mean, she did lose her husband on the surface of things. Sure. She was the, a victim. You know, the FBI had focused at first on so, another family member in the Sue Snow household, which was our second. Ah, uh, so, so, so the uh, second person who bought, what was it, Excedrin? Yeah, Excedrin capsules. Took a capsule and died, and the police thought maybe it was her husband. They really did. That killed this woman. So they had another suspect. He took a polygraph, and yeah, he it was, was pretty exonerated. obvious that it wasn't him. Right, and then they focused on Stella Nickel. Now, but before, they, they, when, when Stella Nickel first came to the forefront as a possible killer or whatever, they thought, well, how could she be the killer? She's the one who called, the atten called it to our attention that her husband died of cyanide poisoning because she told investigators that she saw on television the death of Sue Snow. Her husband was dead and buried, and she said, I think my husband took some pills from the same lot number as Sue Snow. That's what got the ball rolling. Uh, prosecutors can She didn't let him die of emphysema. She calls up the police and says, or the FBI, and says he didn't die of emphysema. On television, a woman has died. My, right. Guess what? My husband took cyanide. Hey, wait Must a minute. Must be the same batch. Hey, wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute. Come look at this case again. And they did uh, look at some uh, blood samples that they had, and they determined that well, they he had, in fact, eyes, right? Right, blood his samples eyes. left over from the eye bank. Ah. And that's how they determined uh, okay. Bruce Nickel was a cyanide victim. And the Now they start to concentrate on Stella. Right. They, uh, what happens to you, Willie? You're saying, no, it hasn't happened? No, well, I couldn't hardly believe that, um, that they were investigating her. Um, I, they got along fine, my Aunt Stella and Uncle Bruce did. They got along fine. And uh, they did, they did investigate her. And, and you um, defended her, you said no way. Oh, absolutely I defended her. It was, she, I didn't think she was capable of murder. I didn't think that there, was a, there wasn't enough problems 
that would institute her to kill my uncle. She, uh, they got along fine. They seemed to get along fine when I was around. And really, just because she called me in Houston to say, well, you know, I'm going to leave Uncle Bruce, I just sort of blew it off and let it go. Just like Greg said, I just thought it was just a, you know, we all have petty fights with our spouse. When, at what point, did you begin to change your mind and think, aha, uh -huh, my aunt may have done it? Well, um, after the trial was over and my Aunt Stella was convicted, um, again, because we were close, it was my responsibility to pack everything up in her mobile and take it to my home in Richland. And that took me several trips, and a lot of stuff just went into boxes and just got crammed in. I have a little person, and we were trying to get all the stuff moved over the mountains. And after that was all done, and my son was going to come back and live with me, then I began to go through these boxes of stuff a little bit here, throw stuff out that she wasn't going to need and keep stuff that she was. And, and I had known that Cynthia Lee had told a couple of stories about my Aunt Stella at the time, neither of which I believed. I felt like Cynthia Lee was lying to get her mother in trouble. And one of them was a story about a kidnapping plot that was being written up in a diary. And another, uh, the other was that um, she had tried to kill my Uncle Bruce with peel, um, seeds in his coffee. Now, this is Stella's daughter who's saying yes. mother is a pretty bad woman. She's trying to kill him or she's trying to kidnap him. It's right. important to note that the FBI case languished. It went nowhere. They had no real evidence to tie Stella to the crime. That all changed when Stella's daughter, Cynthia, came forward for whatever reason she had to say, <clears throat> my mom had planned to kill my father. And he, she planned to hire a hitman. One time she planned to uh, stage a kidnapping. Another time she fed him some toxic seeds from our garden. Another time she did this and that. She did, there were like five or six plans that supposedly Stella had hatched and shared the plans with Cynthia. Well, the one plan that Stella probably used, or according to Cynthia, was the reenacting the Chicago Tylenol murders, in which, remember, seven people died in Chicago in 1982. Stella thought that was the perfect plan. I'll poison Bruce with some cyanide, I'll put some bottles out on the shelves, and it'll look like an accident, a random killing, then I'll collect. Okay, people who didn't think that Cynthia was right, that she was making it all up about her mother. Uh, their reason for thinking that was that the drug company put out an award of how much money? There was a $300,000 reward. So if Cynthia turned her mother in, Cynthia would get $300,000. She would share in that reward. Now let me take you very quickly, Willie. In moving Cynthia's things, the trial is over, Cynthia's convicted, uh, the, uh, Willie, Sorry, Stella's convicted, the trial is over, Cynthia gets the award money, and I, she blows town. I think what we need to get back to is what did Willie find when she took her, grant, her, exactly. her aunt's belongings? What she went find? through those belongings and she made a startling discovery. What was I did. it? I did. I was downstairs going through some things and there was a small diary, a small brown diary in a box of things. And, and I picked it up to see if I should throw it out, just flip through it, and as I flipped through it, I began to realize that there were entries into it that talked about there's a man watching me from across the street and someone is calling me and someone is following me and and I'm looking at this and it's and what's happening is that Cynthia Lee whom I have believed all this time has been lying through her teeth that there might be some credibility and I'm struggling with what this diary says and what my aunt Stella says and what I believe and then I lay the book aside and I'm going through some more things and there's a small box that had jars, uh, little prescription bottles of seeds and one of them was marked foxglove and it was about half empty. You can kill somebody with foxglove if you know what it, to well, do. Well, it didn't work on Bruce. Uh -huh. But you could kill somebody. Your mind changed? My mind began to change. I, um, this is my aunt and I love her very much. and. Um, it's pretty hard to come to the realization that she might have done You have no idea how difficult that struggle has been to go from having such loyalty and love for someone to still loving them but beginning to question both them and yourself. Did she kill my uncle and did she kill a neighbor lady? When we come back, we'll talk to Stella's sister, Berta, who says Stella didn't do it. She's innocent. We'll be right back. In case you're just joining us, we have enlisted Greg Olson, who has written a fascinating story, a true story, called Bitter Almonds. And we're talking about uh, Stella Nichol, 
who was accused of poisoning and killing her husband, Bruce, with cyanide-laced aspirin capsules. She also apparently killed someone else, if she did do it. Now, we've been talking to Willie, who says that in reading the diary and other papers, she's come to feel that her aunt is guilty, although she thought at the beginning she wasn't. Please meet Berta. She is Stella's sister. Berta says Stella is innocent. Berta, you heard your niece Willie say your sister is guilty. She's proof in the papers, and there's some other proof. And there was a trial, and the trial says she's guilty. Why do you think she's innocent? Because of the way we were raised as children. We had the same mother. Mother yes. was a strong person and raised all of us the same. There's not any one of us that could kill. Your sister couldn't possibly have done it? No. What do you think of the evidence? What do you think, for example, of the things she read in the diary? What diary? Where is the diary, Willie? The diary is destroyed. Why is the diary destroyed? The diary is destroyed because at the time I found the diary, I still wasn't convinced that Stella was guilty. And if I went to trial again, I didn't want it to be used as evidence. So to protect your aunt, you did yes, away with the diary. On the phone is Karen. Karen, are you with us? Yes, I am. You were a very close friend of Stella's. Stella and Bruce were very close to my mother and father. They were my mom and dad's best friends. Okay. Did she do it? No, she did not. How do you know she didn't do it? Um, if you knew Stella Nickel, um, you would say the same thing. <laughs> she was, um, she had too many strong convictions to commit murder. She was somebody that, um, would have taken somebody and shot him, uh, point blank instead of being sneaky and committed murder in the way that, that she was convicted. Did you both, Berta and Karen, follow the trial? Yes, I was at the trial every day that the trial was on. Then how could the people who judged her guilty be wrong? In what way were they wrong? I feel that, that, that she was snowballed in the courts and that the, the government didn't have any choices but to put the blame on her because they were under such pressure in the state of Washington to, to make a conviction on this. I see. So she was railroaded? I believe so, yes. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question. Why, why was Cynthia, if she knew something about the murder, why would she wait so long to say anything? Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, Do you believe I, that Stella's daughter, Cynthia, d is the one who did it? I would like to question her on her, her information. I'm not saying possibly she's the one, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of her friends were. Can we answer, Greg, his question? She, w she claims, Cynthia claims that she didn't really believe her mother was serious about it. That although they talked about it for over two years, <laughs> Cynthia said, I just didn't really think she was talking about my dad, which... Uh, she called him her dad, you know, really at the trial before he was just Bruce. He wasn't really her dad. Um, but they, um, she just said, I didn't believe my mom. And so she never people... turned her mom in before it happened. No. She turned her mom and, in after it and happened. And really, after Sally. After Mr. Mile offered the, the reward is when Cindy started talking. She started talking when the drug company gave the money. Do we know where the daughter is today? <laughs> no <laughs> one knows? No one does. Not any family member. Cindy ha has a sister that she uh, uh, recently had a baby. Cindy's sister lives in another state, would love to see her, has not seen her since Cindy got... Cynthia has Cindy got $250,000 for turning her mother in. And took a powder. I just want to say it's, it's a pity that you destroyed the diary, but I wanted to say, what, um, what, how can you base uh, whether your sister is guilty or not by the fact that you were all brought up by the same parent? There's um, very many murderers out there that, were, that have right. siblings, and their siblings haven't murdered. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Berta, you want to answer that? Because Stella was a gentle person. Yeah. A, a she person. She was not a gentle person. Well, well she a served time for beating her daughter when the daughter was nine years old. Stella served time in jail. Berta, Stella was in jail for having beaten her daughter? Yes. And the How reasons well? for it. What were the reasons? Okay, you have a child, 10 years old. The 10-year-old decides she's going to wear makeup. A new law comes into California. You are not to strike your child. This child still will not stay out of the makeup before going to school. You have tried everything that there is to try. What's left? Beat her to death. A spanking. This kid was black and blue from head to toe, and Stella puts it off by saying she bruises easily. She uh -huh. does. <laughs> Question. Okay. Now, I want to ask Berta something. How well do you really know your sister? As well as I know myself. Well, isn't it a, a fact that wait, I wait was the one... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what? You're my aunt, and you are the gentle person in the family. Aunt Stella's my aunt, too, and she is not a gentle person. 
she has a quick temper, but it's right, right then. Okay, it's Cynthia a got a spanking, okay. a beating, whatever you want to call Question. it. Instant. Question. Did it not ever occur to you that that uh, evidence that you found when Are you Are you were, talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking uh -huh. to you. Too really. Uh, the diary and these uh, seeds. Uh, didn't it ever occur to you that your aunt didn't put it there, maybe the daughter did? You know, that's a good question, and that thought has occurred to me, but it isn't like I came to that conclusion as that being the only evidence. Um, well, let's I, have I write... some other, let's have some, evidence. yeah, you, you literally destroyed evidence, but I think maybe legally after trial you're allowed to do it. Give me some other solid evidence, Greg, very quickly. The, uh, there's, one, a, there's a diary that is gone. Okay, we don't so have it. Okay, so there's no anymore. evidence there. There were insurance policies. Okay, that Stella wasn't was confused about. And if anyone's dealt with insurance companies, you all, you can get confused pretty easily. That was believable. She wasn't sure how much money she had coming when Bruce died. That's that's. Could that, somebody have forged an insurance policy? Well, she forged the insurance policy. She forged, she the forged them, but again, all right, we proved listen, that. But it could happen to anyone. Give me some a other hard. A lot of women signed for their husbands, and that is a fact. Okay, give me some other hard evidence. The, the the biggest piece of evidence was the fact that her fingerprints were found in library books that dealt with uh, cyanide poisoning, the mechanics of cyanide poisoning. Who brought it? It was Cynthia, though, who told the, the federal investigators, go look in the library. My mom researched it. So the police go to the library, take a book on cyanide poisoning mm -hmm. out, and find, and find the mother's fingerprints? And they did it at Cynthia's bidding. She was the one that told them where Took to them go. Took them to the library. It's There's one more. ironic. Yes, it is ironic. When we come back, I'll go to your one more point. We'll talk to a woman who says Stella wasn't the devoted wife we believed her to be. Stay with us. We're sitting here with Greg Olson trying to unravel a murder mystery, looking for some answers as to whether or not Stella murdered her second husband, Bruce, and a woman named... Sue Snow. Sue Snow. You had a question. Yes, my question, what type of relationship did the stepfather have with, um, his, with the daughter? Cynthia was the stepdaughter of Bruce. What kind of a relationship mm -hmm. did they have? Yes. Yes, um, about the relationship, you know, everybody says she called Bruce dad. She only called Bruce dad in a large group of people or when Bruce was there, but when she was alone, she called him Bruce. Did they not have a good relationship? <clears throat> She didn't talk highly of him when she was um, alone. She did not. Question. My question is about Cynthia. Do you think she was trying to get back at the mother? Maybe she was child abuse. you saying that the mother did go to jail for beating her. Yeah. I think that's a real possibility. There's a lot of baggage back there between Cynthia and Stella. Stella did not raise Cynthia her whole life. They only recently reunited after about an eight-year separation before... Um, uh, whatever. <laughs> they, they got... I'm like you, Greg. Tell them, do it Tell on me television. The story. <laughs> doing it on television and writing it in a book are a little difficult. Please uh, uh, meet AJ and Jim, friends of Stella and Bruce. Now, you got two friends. Unfortunately, each one has a different theory on who killed Bruce. AJ, we'll start with your theory. My theory? Yes. Stella and Cindy both killed him. Stella um, and Cynthia both did it? Yeah. In cahoots. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. What do you base um, that on? It's not so much what happened beforehand, it was what happened after. Now, you lived with Stella and Bruce for two months before Bruce died, so that's why we're talking to you. How important is it to talk? Somebody's living in the house. Your son told you Bruce died. Stella was a little angry with you that she, you had learned this from somebody uh, else. Stella she, wasn't a little angry. How angry was she? Stella was livid that I found out any other way but by her. Why? Uh, I have no idea. Um, I was a little shocked myself when I got to the house and talked to her. Um, she literally read me up one side and down the other that... Well, you lived in that house. How was their relationship? Well, Stella went in one room and read a book, and Bruce and myself and my daughter and Jim watched TV in the other room. Bruce was a recovering alcoholic, and he had been very successful for 10 years, had not touched a drop. He did not allow alcohol in the house, but AJ and her husband at the time found beer and other alcohol in the house hidden away that after Bruce would go to work, <coughs> Stella would tip back a few and do other things. And she, that was a big change for Stella. She never drank at home, but something was going on. Why do you think she did it, AJ? Give me, give me something. Money? 
She money. did it for the money, and her daughter helped her. Yeah, I'm sure Daughter's they were off scot-free, though. Daughter's got, them, got money, and off she well, goes. Well, you know, if, if you're a criminal, the federal government will hide you. Jim, A.J. believes Stella murdered Bruce because she was in an unhappy marriage. I don't believe that. You don't think so? Tell me why not. Well, I was probably closest to him before, uh, well, for the last three years, I guess, before he died. And uh, they, were, they were happy all the time. And Bruce and I were very, very close. Uh, we rode to work together occasionally, uh, went out to a friend's house and helped them put antennas up for their CB radios and just that kind of thing. But the Jim, point I is... I think the question really is, how close were you with Stella? <coughs> That's what people seem to want to know. Yeah, Everywhere I went, when the FBI was there before me, obviously. I'm a reporter following a story long after it's happened. But there was so much innuendo about Jim's relationship with Stella. I'd like to know ah. what really was the relationship. Jim, have you ever had an affair with Stella? No way. I, I was married, and Bruce and I were Why too much... Why did Stella tell me that her federal defender said that you told the grand jury that you did have an affair with her? Aha! Uh -huh. no, no, I told the FBI when they first... That's what their pursuit was when they first uh, in, got a hold of me. Uh, they were under the impression that I was part of this scheme, that I was involved with the murder at scheming. And okay. so they, they got a hold of me. We went down to a restaurant. We sat there for two hours. And all they could do was ask me how close I was to Stella. And all Jim, you were very close. You believe Stella didn't do it. Right. Greg, you believe he was Stella's lover? I don't know that he, he tells me he's not Stella's lover. I'm going to try to respect the man that he's telling me the truth. Exactly. But I will tell you that maybe he wasn't Stella's lover. Maybe Stella was in love with him. Maybe that's part of this crime here. Jim, I mean, do you, would it no, be possible I, that Stella was in love with you? I, I doubt that. Seriously. Okay, question. <laughs> I'm just curious what Stella said when she was accused. Did she say anything about her it. daughter or anything? Stella told everybody, my daughter's sent, sent, sending me up the river. My daughter's doing it for the money. My daughter doesn't love me. My daughter hates me. All of which was, was true. After, though. Yeah, that can, was can after, though. That was after, because, because even the... through the trial, she never even thought of Cynthia. Right after the trial, she told me people have been saying that it possibly could be Cindy. And the more I think about it, there's a possibility there. But never did she think of it until after the trial was done. That's a lie. Not true? No, it's not. Why isn't yeah, it true? It is. And the one thing that you brought up about them going in different Wait, wait, wait. Let's, AJ, you made a statement. Support the statement. <laughs> I don't know how to tell it. Um, it's... It's like Cindy and Stella had a rivalry. It's like if I went out and went to bed with this man, Mama's going to do it next. And I can guarantee you they did. Uh, that is true. That what? is true. Wait, Greg. There was. Wait, a, there let's was, go to the author. I will tell you that there is, there is plenty of documented evidence and in, interviews with people that they did. That, that the have, mother w would sleep with the same men as the daughter, and the daughter would sleep with the same men as the mother. Right. Yep. The plot thickens. I've talked coming. to men, the men who have done it. I mean, they're, they're, and they're not proud about it. They're they slept with about both it. mother and daughter. Yeah. And you talked to them. Mm -hmm. Greg. What do you think about that, Jim? Jim was not well, one of them. He's never said that. No, I didn't. And, you know, you alluded to the fact that they brought that up in the grand jury. The, what That's they what Stella told me. It the person was true. You're I was there <laughs> at the grand jury. It isn't jury. true? No. It, then why no. did Stella say it? Like I started to say, when, this, when the FBI first come, came and got me, and we went down, and, and for right. two hours, they were beating that door down. You know, how close were you to Stella? What, what they were trying to do was get a motive factor in there for me to be part of this, this scheme to she, get rid of Bruce. She, if she was in love with you, she would kill her husband right. to get what, rid of whatever. Him. So uh, during the course of this, we had gotten nowhere for an hour and a half. And so I finally said to the agent in charge, I said, okay, let's assume... I, I want to know where we're going. Let's assume that I had an affair with Stella. Just, right. Let, this is an assumption. Now, this is not true. Right. But let's, affi let's find out where it's going to go from that point, because this is what you want me to say. Right. And that's, that's I how that... Been, I'd have done the same thing you did. Stella I'd told so. me... I, I interviewed Stella. I'm the only person to interview her. I interviewed her five times in federal prison. She told me that the reason Jim, who she speaks very highly of, of Jim, right. she said that she always wondered why he wasn't there to defend her, Okay in federal court. And she, you know, I said, well, Stella, why? Why wasn't he there? And she said her public defender told her, listen, Stella, Jim admitted to the grand jury about an affair that you had, and we can't afford to try a sex case along with our, our cyanide problem here. Coming up next, a woman who says Stella caused the death of her mother. Be right back. Hi, 
have some questions. AJ. Yeah. If it wasn't with Jim, do you believe, since you lived in the house and nobody else could be closer, I guess, do you think that Stella cheated on Bruce? I know she did. Oh, okay. Whether it was with Jim or not. Oh, uh, it was several people. Greg, could uh, the daughter have slept with her stepfather? I, I, of course, I can't. I've never talked with Cindy, and uh, Bruce is dead, so I don't know the answer. We can't Although answer. Stella has told me that she suspected that, Bruce, uh, that Cindy was in love with Bruce and meant to really kill her. But she didn't say that till later. Till later. That's been recently. Craig, that was one of my questions. Uh, did Cynthia sleep with her stepfather? Also, my second question to uh, AJ, what relationship did you have with Stella? Uh, Stella was one of my best friends. Uh, my kids called Stella and Bruce aunt and uncle. Wow. Then how does it make you feel that one of your best friends, that the kid's aunt and uncle, you're now saying she did it. How does that make you feel? Uh, the truth is pretty bad. Pretty bad. I've, I've lost a lot of friendships. I have a lot of acquaintances in my life. But because of this, I have stopped being friends with a lot of people. Because I don't trust them. You don't trust them? No. I no, Stella that. did me dirty. She did you dirty? How did oh. she do you dirty? She used me. How? I was... She wanted to go partying when Bruce was gone. Uh, AJ, come on, let's go. Okay, where do we go? Well, I was the wall dressing. I'd be in there playing a the pool with the guys while she was out in the pickup screwing them. At the uh, tavern. Aha. Uh -huh. So how did she do you dirty? She used you as a... Hey, I was her escape Screen. Though. You were the screen. I'm just curious, uh, what happened to the first husband? You know... Oh, uh, they divorced. Yeah. Okay, but we're filling in all those facts. Yes, ma'am? Um, my first question is, how come, you, did you read the diary before you des destroyed it? We're having trouble with the diary. Oh. You destroyed the diary and found it after the trial. After the trial If you was had over. found it before the trial, it would have been admissible at the trial. But since you found it afterwards... That's right. It was after the trial. It was after the conviction. She was already in Purdy before I could finally... She, she had a friend who was living in, the, in her trailer, and it took me several weeks after her conviction to get up and start hauling. When he got ready to move out, then I got did to go the tr and, Did the diary ever say, I'm going to kill Bruce? No. It, it did only not. said, I'm paranoid? And the, on that, you changed your opinion? The, the, thi the only thing about the diary is what it did is it gave Cynthia Lee some credibility about all the uh, things that she had said about my aunt. Ah. It didn't say that she was guilty. It didn't say that she had even any plans of killing Uncle Bruce. It didn't have anything to do with Uncle Bruce but dying. But on that, you changed your opinion. But you never that really believed what Cynthia said. She was a liar. Okay. You That's right. Cynthia you Lee thought she was, was a liar until you read it in the diary. Please meet Haley. She says that Stella is the one who killed her mother. Haley, tell us what happened. Um, I, I woke up that morning for school. You know, it was a regular day. And um, I went into the shower. My mother said good morning to me and everything. She went into her bathroom to get ready. And when I got out of the shower, I just heard that the water in her sink was still on and it's been running too long, I thought, for her to be using it. So I felt worried. I went into her bathroom and there she was laying on the ground. She was, um, her eyes were wide open. She looked very scared. I tried calling her name. She didn't respond. Haley was 15 when this happened. Um, she was the one to find her mother. She was the one to summon 911 to come out. And they airlifted her mother to the hospital where they determined after just a very short time that she was brain dead and she would not survive. Um, it's been a very hard of course. Who Ordeal. figured out that the mother had taken a Exeteran? Well, the first person that even suggested it was her husband, Paul Webking, who had been married to Sue Snow for six months. He suggested that, hey, she took Exeteran in the morning. Maybe one of them was uh, tainted with cyanide. Did they find out that it was? They did. They did come to the house. They seized the bottle. And that's when they sort of put the focus on the husband. They thought, how could he have even suggested that cyanide could have killed his wife? You know, when, uh, unless he, he had known about it himself. But he didn't do it. He did not do it. And he went through hell. He did go through he hell. He went through hell because and they pushed him for, for weeks and weeks and weeks as the killer. They got in there with the family. I think Haley 
all of them were questioned. Uh, many of them came to believe that Paul was the killer. Huh. No possibility, though. No. They were wrong. He was an innocent what man. What has been your... What, what are you thinking about? What's been your attitude? These people all have this argument about this woman named Stella. Has any of them ever called you? Nobody's ever contacted me. Nobody at all. I, from what I hear from Greg, Stella pretty much um, doesn't... She acts as though I don't exist. Whoever did it took your mother's life. Yeah. It's not fair, Stella never it? even says to so Snow's name. All she ever says is, I did not kill my husband. She I never mean, says She I never, am. ever mentions uh, Haley's mother. Neither yeah, but that's not waters. fair. Stella well, took Sue Snow and Bruce. But I don't she think killed she did. him. No, she didn't. Bull. No, she didn't. Now, that's Bull. the reason they didn't want me on the trial in the, in the courtroom and all, because I had too many questions for the FBI that led credibility to somebody else doing it. Not what, are the, what are the questions you have? Well, for instance... Give us your best shot. <laughs> the, uh, the cyanide could have come from any place. They, they say that she got the cyanide from a, an aquarium. Or I saw her with the stuff. I know she had it. Certainly she had it, but she also had an aquarium. That's right, and she had three bottles of the stuff. She only used one in the fist tank. I saw that, Jim. How, how I the was other, there. You know, you've got the different size capsules that were in the bottle, and this alludes to the fact that you don't have... You can't get different size capsules out of one bottle unless somebody else has put them in there. How did we... You, Greg, you better help us. Uh, was it this... Did she have a bottle of the same lot of Exeteran as killed? As Sue Snow, yes, yes. yes. Okay. That was how Stella got the idea, she says, to call because I, read, I saw in the news the lot number and Bruce had the same bottle in our home. Um, how much time was between the two deaths? And did um, this, what was Stella doing at the time? This is really important. We all have to remember that Bruce Nickel died first. It was a week later that Sue died. Now, the prosecutors contend that Stella needed a reason to get accidental death since her husband was dead. You know, they said had ruled emphysema. Um, it's critical that we understand that Sue Snow did not have to die if Stella's plan, you know, it had backfired on her. It didn't work. She well, did we don't quite understand how Sue Snow died because Bruce died. Also, we'll discuss that when we return. Greg, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but we don't understand how they linked Stella to Sue Snow's death. Sue Snow went in and she got some pills and it killed her. How do we know that Stella did that? How did they make that link? They, make, they made the link because of, we're misstating some things here. There was mixed in with the cyanide that was found in the five bottles. Remember, there are five bottles that were tainted with uh, cyanide. Mixed in with the capsules that contained the cyanide were little green particles that the FBI determined belonged to an aquarium product called LG Destroyer. Oh. All of the she... bottles had that, and then they identified Stella as having purchased that product. That's how they linked her to Sue Stone. Okay, why did Stella need to kill a woman she didn't even know, Sue Stone? Why so, did she need to kill her? So Bruce would be an accident. And then she could get double money. Bruce was already, remember, Bruce was If somebody was else first. dies from it, then she can say, my husband died from the same thing as this other woman, therefore it's an accident, therefore I get more money. Absolutely. Right. So Sue Snow needed to die in her mind. It wasn't necessarily just Sue Snow. That's right. It was anybody. anybody. It could have been anybody in this room, that's the thing. Okay, I have two questions. One's for Willie. Why didn't you confront your aunt with a diary when you found it? I have confronted my aunt by a letter. Via she was already in jail. Letters. She was already in prison. Oh, I see. And what's the reason you were living in the house? Um, I was invited up there to work with Stella at, at the time it was Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo Guard Service. It then went into Olympic security at SeaTac International Airport. Okay. So it has to do with work. Take yeah. a break. We'll be right back. All right. The question remains, if uh, Stella and Cynthia didn't like each other, why would a mother confide in someone she didn't like her plans to murder someone? What would the reason be? 
uh, that's uh, you know secrets shared by mothers and daughters. Who knows? You know why? She might, even though they didn't get along, she might have told her that. Why would she tell now Sally? What do you think? Okay, I I think that Greg Olson has studied this case and everything about it. I think he's talked to everyone that can talk to. I think he knows more than the jury. I think he knows more than the FBI. I think he knows more than I know and our audience knows. So I'm going to ask him. The lady's plea has been denied for retrial. Mm -hmm. She's in there for how long? A 90-year sentence. She'll be eligible at age 76. What does Greg think happened? Do I think she's guilty? Yes. Do I think she's innocent? I'll tell you that after all my research, I, can't, I would not want to be on that jury to make that decision because I know about Cynthia. I know what kind of a woman she was. I know about her relationship with her daughter. So what is Greg And I'm think? not going to believe her. You don't believe Cynthia? I'm not going to believe her, no. It's possible that Cynthia might have done it? I can't say whether she did it or not. That wouldn't be right for me to say. Could but I would not believe her. We do not believe her. The jury believed her. Other yeah, people the, believed her. The jury, but the jury didn't made know. A study to, the jury didn't know about the background between these two women. You know, she was portrayed in court as a, a daughter who, oh, I can't believe I had to turn my mother in. When really, she was glad to sell Stella up the river. She was glad to get the money. Let me ask you a question: Could Stella and the daughter have acted together? I think that's the real possibility. Aha! It's Take a, a competition. Greg tells me that when last seen, Cynthia, with $250,000, was last seen in living in a mini storage locker. <laughs> the name of the book is... Bitter B Almonds, Bitter which Almonds. is The Smell of Cyanide. Thank you. Some members of our audience will receive, and a promotional fee has been provided by... Thick Liquid.